ready to do some sleuthing. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun video. And while this week we aren't ranking per se, we are doing quite a bit of detective work. Because in many of Disney's incredible animated movies, there are actually hidden characters from other movies. And they are often quite difficult to see, but trust me when I say it's so fun to be able to examine these movies up close and try to find the hidden characters from the other Disney movies. And so we are gonna go through movie by movie today and I'm gonna tell you all of the hidden characters that I have found over the years. So that way when you watch these Disney movies in the future, maybe you can try to spot them. If you are excited for today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if this if this is your first time seeing me, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a massive Disney adult. I started my platform over on TikTok but have moved to YouTube in order to do longer form content, which I have been enjoying so much. And I always release my long form YouTube videos on Fridays at 5 p.m. So to all of those who are returning, welcome back. I am so happy to see you. And for all of those who are new, welcome aboard and I hope you enjoy today's video. And I'm not sure if it's gonna be in frame, but I am wearing my 2023 Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party spirit jersey because halfway to Halloween just happened and now if you don't know me Halloween happens to be my favorite holiday of the entire year and I almost always make it a point to visit Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and I'm so excited to say I will be attending this year too and nice and early I already have my costume picked out and I think it's gonna be such a fun one to wear around the parks. If you guys would like a little hint as to what my costume is gonna be this year I posted this picture over on Instagram and there is a spooky little hint over in the caption but enough chat let's get into the good stuff. As always in my videos I'm gonna start off with some disclaimers and conditions and I would definitely recommend watching the conditions today because there are some hidden things in Disney movies that I won't be talking about But if you would like to jump right into seeing all of the hidden Disney characters in Disney movies Then you could jump right to this timestamp for the disclaimers today First and foremost I am NOT associated with the Walt Disney Company and therefore I do not speak for the brand or the company All of my opinions in this video are just mine and do not reflect those of the company and disclaimer number two I welcome any and all opinions so make sure to leave all of your thoughts down below I love having conversations with you guys about our favorite Disney movies and so I would love to hear all of your opinions on all of these fun hidden Disney characters. And first and foremost for our conditions, the cameos that I'm going to be talking about today are in Disney animated movies. This does mean that we will not be including any outside companies including Pixar, 20th Century Fox, or Lucasfilms. However, if a Pixar character does make a cameo in a Walt Disney animation movie, I will be mentioning it on today's list. We are going to be focusing mainly on hidden characters in other Disney movies. There are also many hidden objects in movies, but today I'm mainly going to be focused on the characters. That being said, we might throw in a few objects here and there, but hidden objects and hidden Mickeys in the Disney movies are not the main objective of this video. Also keep in mind that today's video is broken up by movie. So if you happen to be watching a Disney movie and just want to see segments of the hidden characters in that particular movie, you can just jump right to the chapters down below. I wanted to let out really quickly is that I will not be going over the movie Wish. And there's a very specific reason for that which is that this movie is meant to pay homage to the 100 years of the Walt Disney Company. And therefore it is chock full of hidden references and Easter eggs. And trust me when I say if I were to go through the entire movie and pick out every single Easter egg, this video would be hours. <laughs> but if you guys are interested in me going through and picking out all of the Easter eggs from Wish, make sure to leave it down below so that way I can make a separate video on that. And the other thing I wanted to mention really quick before we jump in is that I'm going to try to keep all of the hidden characters in sequential order for each movie. So that way it's a little bit easier for you guys to just watch the video quick and expect which characters are gonna show up in which order. And with all of that out of the way, I believe we're ready to start finding some hidden Disney characters. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink, and grab your magnifying glass because some of these are quite hard to see. Now I think it's relatively safe to say that a lot of the early Disney movies don't contain a lot of cameos. Considering Disney hadn't really created iconic characters that they could then place in to newer movies. So there are a lot more hidden characters as we move on throughout the years, but there are a few cameos at the very beginning of Walt Disney Animation. So let's get into it. First and foremost, in the movie Snow White, during the song Whistle While You Work, Snow White's animal friends help her out with some laundry. A bunch of clothes are placed on top of Snow White's dear friend, and one of these articles of clothing might look a little familiar. While it's not 100% confirmed, 
I believe that this little red pair of pants might very well belong to Mickey Mouse, as in certain shots you can sort of see little buttons on there too, which very much look like the two buttons that are on Mickey's pants. So this one in particular might not be 100%, especially because it was the first Walt Disney animated movie, but I always like to look at these little trousers and think, hey, it really was all started by a mouse. And with that, we will move on to Walt Disney's second full-length animated movie, which is Pinocchio. And during the song, When You Wish Upon a Star, sung by Jiminy Cricket, if you look in the background when he's singing on a book, you can see some other books stacked up against each other. Two of these books have titles that would later become future Disney movies. The first of which is Alice in Wonderland, and the second of which is Peter Pan. I love this detail because it's really one of the only instances of hidden Disney characters where the hidden characters actually appeared before their fully animated movies were released. I feel like this was a little nod from Walt Disney to say, look what's coming in the future, because he had plenty of magic to come. And that wraps up Pinocchio, so we are going to do a massive time jump all the way to 101 Dalmatians. While 101 Dalmatians came out a lot later than Pinocchio and Snow White, it really is the first animated movie to directly copy and paste characters from a previous Disney movie into the background as hidden characters. In 101 Dalmatians, there is a scene called the Twilight Bark. This is a really fun segment where a bunch of dogs bark to one another in order to get the news out that Perdita's 15 puppies have gone missing. The first dog to start the Twilight Bark is actually Jacques from Lady and the Tramp. And then a little bit later in the same scene, you can see Peg and Bull, who are sitting in a little pet shop window surrounded by other Dalmatian puppies. And then in another shot on the city streets, you can see Lady front and center, and you can also see Tramp if you look on top of the carriage that is towards the back of the scene. This one is so fun and absolutely adorable because it almost places these animal movies in the same universe. And believe me when I say we are not done with these characters, we will be seeing them yet again on today's list. <laughs> but with that, we are going to move on to the next movie on our list, which is The Black Cauldron. Now you guys know I absolutely love The Black Cauldron. It is one of my favorite underrated Disney movies, and I love it so much because it's so weird and wacky and zany, but it actually contains a cameo of one of our favorite Disney heroines. And as a side note, if you guys haven't seen my ranking Disney heroines video, I will link it right above for you, because this next hidden character actually appears on that list. But in the scene where our three heroes, Tarn, Elanwi, and Flam, visit the Fair Folk, who are this group of fairies who have hidden underground, in order to stay safe from the Horned King and the Black Cauldron, you might just recognize a familiar little fairy friend. As in this scene, you can find a hidden Tinkerbell right in between Princess Ailanwi and Taran. This one is definitely a blink and you'll miss it moment, so make sure to pay close attention in the fair folk scene. But next we are moving on to Oliver and Company. Now, as I said before, we were absolutely not done seeing our Lady and the Tramp friends. And to add to that, we're also gonna see a fun cameo from an 101 Dalmatians friend. As in Oliver and Company, there is a fun cameo appearance from Jacques, Trusty, and Peg in one scene. And then just a little bit later, you can see a fun cameo appearance appearance by Pongo, the leading character of 101 Dalmatians. Again, I absolutely love that these cute Disney animals appear in each other's movies. And honestly, it really makes you wonder whether or not all of these fun animal friends are all from the same universe. Although their original movies take place in different locations, so maybe these puppies are all on some sort of vacation. <laughs> but with that, we are going to move on to one of my favorite Disney animated movies of all time. And this one is chock full of hidden Disney characters. We are moving Moving on to The Little Mermaid, which came out in 1989. Now, at the very beginning of the movie, there is a concert being held in Atlantica. And right before the concert starts, King Triton has a big grand entrance on a chariot, which is pulled by two dolphins. Now, these first few cameos are quick, so you might want to be ready to pause. As King Triton is flying over the crowd, we can actually see four hidden Disney characters. One of these characters is seated by himself, and then the other three hidden characters are all seated together. The first character that you might notice is a little little hidden Kermit the Frog sitting in the audience. And funnily enough, if you're already looking for Kermit, you might also want to look for this fun little mermaid who's wearing a pair of Mickey ears. <laughs> but then, a few frames later, when King Triton is about halfway across the screen, if you pause at the right time, you might be able to see a hidden 
Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, who are all attending the premiere of The Daughters of Triton. This is such a fun cameo, and I love always trying to pause right at the right time when watching this movie, so that way I can see these fun hidden Disney characters. Hi, editing Nikki jumping in really quickly to tell you about a character that I completely forgot to mention in the original script of this video. But at the very end of Under the Sea, Sebastian and all of the fish create this tableau around a empty rock where Ariel is supposed to be. You might notice a little blue fish wearing some glasses. This just so happens to be a reference to a character that comes from a movie that not too many people are familiar with. Yes, this little fish is Mr. Lippet from the movie The Incredible Mr. Lippet, and he just so happens to make an appearance in Under the Sea. Now what else is fun about this cameo is that if you happen to visit the Under the Sea journey of the Little Mermaid ride in the Magic Kingdom, you can actually find this Mr. Lippet in the Under the Sea scene, as when your clamshell is moving past the dancing Ariel, if you happen to look Look to the right of your clamshell and just behind you, you might see a little hidden Mr. Lippet in the seaweed. Now, as we go through Ariel's story, we eventually end up in Prince Eric's castle. At one point, there is a wide shot of Prince Eric's dining room, and up against the wall, there are three portraits. In the second portrait, we can see a hidden Prince Philip and Princess Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. And we already know that all Disney princesses are friends if you ask them at Disney, so I think this is super fun that it was actually Prince Eric that might have introduced Ariel to Philip and Aurora. And again, a very rare cameo appearance where Aurora is wearing her blue dress. And the final cameo appearances in The Little Mermaid takes place on the ship when Eric and Vanessa are set to be married. Scuttle and Ariel's sea friends all try to help stop the wedding, causing a bunch of chaos. But Max gets free of his leash as he's running through the Crowd, you can actually spot the King and the Grand Duke from Cinderella. Again, another really fun Disney princess crossover. So it really is starting to make sense as to why all the Disney princesses know each other and are friends. <laughs> but with that, we will say goodbye to the Little Mermaid and we're gonna move on to Beauty and the Beast. As at the very beginning of this movie, we see a beautiful wide shot of the forest as it pans up to the Beast's castle. Now what you may not have noticed is that in this forest scene, we can actually see Bambi's mother. Now, how do we know that this is actually Bambi's mother and not just some random deer? Well, funnily enough, the exact animation was copied over from the Bambi film. When Bambi's mother is eating with Bambi, looks up when she hears a noise and turns her head. This exact sequence happens in the beginning of Beauty and the Beast as well. A fun little nod to a heroic Disney character in an absolutely beautiful Disney film. Next, we are moving on to Aladdin. Now, Aladdin has some really fun Disney cameos, but the these are actually a little bit more obvious than the cameos that have happened in the past, so you might have an easier time spotting them. First and foremost, in the Sultan's throne room, the Sultan is putting together a stack of figurines of little animals. In this stack, you might recognize the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. And then a little bit later in the film, once Aladdin and Genie have escaped from the Cave of Wonders, they're in this fun little oasis and having some banter back and forth. And when discussing Aladdin's lying habits, Genie just so happens to transform his head into a very recognizable Disney character who also has a history with lying. As for a few seconds, he transforms his face into that of Pinocchio. And then really quickly after that, Genie is flipping through a little cookbook and gets his finger caught by Sebastian the Crab from The Little Mermaid. And again, because Genie is so well known for referencing pop culture moments, it's a little bit easier to sneak in these hidden Disney cameos and make them a little bit more obvious. But with that, we will move on to one of my favorite Disney cameos in any Disney movie, we are turning to The Hunchback of Notre Dame. At the beginning of the movie, our hero Quasimodo, who also appears in my Ranking Every Disney Heroes video, which I will link up above, <laughs> gets to sing the absolutely beautiful ballad out there. Now, during this song, if you pay extra close attention, when we pan from seeing Notre Dame Cathedral to the streets of Paris, if you look really closely, you can see Belle walking around in her blue village outfit, which does make sense because her movie also takes place in France. And then right behind her, in the very same moment of the movie, you can also see a street seller shaking out a rug, which happens to be the magic carpet from Aladdin. This is such a fun little cameo. Again, a blink and you'll miss it moment, but I always like to try to catch it when I watch Hunchback. For this next hidden character, we are staying in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but we are going all the way to the end of the movie. As during the climactic fight between Quasimodo and Frollo, there is a brief moment where Esmeralda and Quasimodo are hanging off Notre Dame and Judge Claude Frollo is still standing on one of the balconies. You might catch very briefly that there is a stone gargoyle in the shape of a warthog. And 
I can't help but believe that this is definitely meant to reference Pumbaa from The Lion King. Having found all of the hidden characters in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, we are going to move over to the movie Hercules, as there are two really fun character appearances that I can't help but absolutely want to catch every single time. And again, because Hercules is a movie that is not afraid to reference pop culture, these two are a little bit more obvious than the other ones. The first character appearance can be seen when Hercules is posed getting his picture painted onto a vase, or vase, <laughs> as when he steps down, sits down, and takes off the lion mane that is on his head and throws it to the ground, we can clearly see that there is a scar over one of the eyes, and this little scar, along with the lion's coloring, leads us to believe that this lion pelt is that of Scar from The Lion King, which means that poor guy met an unfortunate end. <laughs> but another one of my favorite hidden references sits in this movie during the song I Won't Say I'm In Love, where Meg is walking around and the muses are in the background singing to her. In one scene, Meg walks across the screen as the muses appear as busts who sing to her, and fans who have been to the Disney parks might recognize this as a reference to the singing busts who appear in the Haunted Mansion attraction. They are in the exact same setup, and there is one bust that is sort of broken and leaning to the side, and they are in the exact same formation as the bust that you see in the Haunted Mansion. I absolutely love this reference because I am a huge Haunted Mansion fan. And with that, we're gonna move on to the final movie in the Disney Renaissance, which is Tarzan. During the song Trash in the Camp, Turk is playing the drums on some fine china, and you just might happen to recognize a pot and a little teacup as the same exact design as Mrs. Potts and Chip from Beauty and the Beast. Now, what I absolutely love about this hidden character reference is that back when the walkthrough treehouse in Disneyland used to be themed to Tarzan, there actually was a physical reference to this movie reference in the form of a Mrs. Potts and Chip tea set. As you were walking through this treehouse, you could actually see these two pieces from the movie, but also from Beauty and the Beast. It was just a fun little moment where the hidden character was brought into the Disney parks and actually materialized within the attraction. But a little bit later in the film, there is a moment where Jane's father is being turned upside down by the gorillas and shaken, and a bunch of objects fall off of his body. And if you pause at the right time, one of these objects just so happens to be a little plush animal of Little Brother from the movie Mulan. And Little Brother gets so little screen time in his movie that I guess the animators wanted to include him in this movie as well. All right, next we're gonna move on to Lilo and Stitch, which again has quite a few hidden character references. The first hidden character reference in Lilo and Stitch can be found on Nani's wall as there is a poster for the movie Mulan. I guess Nani really liked the movie Mulan. <laughs> and later when we're walking through the streets of Hawaii, we actually see a restaurant named Mulan Walk, which is of course another reference to Mulan. Likewise, when Lilo and Stitch are walking through the streets, they stumble upon a little shop that has a whole bunch of postcards. On one of these postcards, which is labeled Orlando, you might recognize Cinderella Castle, which also means that Disney World itself is in the same universe as Lilo and Stitch. Kinda cool. Now, another one of my favorite hidden characters in this movie is in the scene when Lilo is looking out her window as the green light is being projected upon her. If you look really closely at her art easel, you can see a stuffed animal version of Dumbo. And the final hidden character in Lilo and Stitch is actually in the form of a little Polaroid picture, which can be seen on Lilo's wall. If you pause at the right time and look very, very closely, you will notice that this is actually a Polaroid of Mickey Mouse, which sort of makes you wonder whether or not Lilo has actually visited Disney World with her family. I love all of the references of Lilo potentially going to Disney World in Lilo and Stitch. And seeing as we have reached the early 2000s, we are going to move on to a few of my not so favorite Disney movies, but which actually have really cool hidden characters, so stick with me. First and foremost, in Treasure Planet, as we are looking around Jim Hawkins' bedroom, we can see a reference to two different Disney characters. First and foremost, on a shelf that he has is a plush animal of Stitch. There's a lot of Disney plush references in these movies. I kind of like it. And that being said, if a Disney scene were to take place in my room, I think they would have quite a few cameos to find. <laughs> but also in Jim Hawkins' room, you'll notice that there is a little rug on his floor next to his bed. If you look really, really close at the detailing on this rug, 
you will also recognize it as the magic carpet from Aladdin. The carpet really makes it around to a lot of Disney movies, huh? Really quickly stopping over into the movie Brother Bear for a fun Pixar cameo. When the brothers are fishing, when the net is disrupted and all of the fish start to escape, you might recognize a familiar clownfish. Now, many have labeled this Nemo, but it could also be Marlin. We're not 100% sure, but we're definitely sure that it's a reference to the movie Finding Nemo. Moving on to another of my not-so-favorite Disney movies, but which has really cool hidden characters, is Meet the Robinsons. During the scene on the baseball field, if you pause at the right time, you will see on the fence that there are posters for certain Disney movies. One of these posters is of Jesse and Bullseye from Toy Story, and the other poster is in reference to The Jungle Book, which features Baloo and Mowgli. And then a little bit later in the movie, when our Robinson friends visit Today Land, you can actually see right behind the sign that this is a clear reference to Space Mountain, which is a structure in the Magic Kingdom, but also just so happens to be a structure in Todayland. Again, another hidden reference to the Disney parks that appears in a Disney movie. I absolutely love these. And with that, we are going to move on to one of my favorite Disney movies, which actually has probably the most references to other Disney movies, besides Wish, of course. And by that movie, I mean Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog is chock full of hidden Disney characters, so get ready to pause this movie quite a bit. In the very first song, Down in New Orleans, we see a shot of the streets and a whole bunch of apartments lined on top of each other. There is a young woman shaking off a carpet, and you will notice this as the magic carpet from Aladdin once again. Next, during the masquerade ball that Charlotte LaBeouf and Big Daddy LaBeouf are throwing at their mansion, you will notice references to a whole bunch of Disney characters. And while these masquerade costumes don't directly reference the Disney characters and don't look exactly like them, they're meant to be an homage to these characters. You will notice a mermaid character who is meant to reference Ariel. You will also notice a very strong resemblance of two masquerade friends to Aladdin and Jasmine. There is also a reference to Bo Peep, which is really fun and cute. And for this masquerade scene in particular, there are a lot of other guests that reference other Disney movies, but I'm gonna let you watch that scene and see who you can spot and leave them down in the comments. The next hidden character in The Princess and the Frog happens when Dr. Facilier calls on his friends from the other side. A bunch of shadow spirits appear around Dr. Facilier, and if you look really closely on the left side of the screen, you will notice one of these spirits actually looks a lot like Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And he doesn't just appear on the wall next to Facilier, he also appears in other scenes, actually helping to do the bidding of Dr. Facilier. But the scene where they all appear around him is definitely the easiest one to spot him in. Moving on to the film a little bit more, in the big Mardi Gras parade section, we see a huge float depicting who appears to be King Triton from The Little Mermaid. And while this can definitely be a reference to the character from The Little Mermaid, I actually think this is a reference to one of Disney's parades. As in the nighttime parade that used to be at Disneyland, the Paint the Night Parade, the Little Mermaid float actually contains a really large depiction of King Triton. And I can't help but compare the similarities between this real life parade float that went through Disneyland and this parade float in the Mardi Gras parade of Princess and the Frog. So whether this is a reference to the Little Mermaid movie or to the Disneyland parade, I'm gonna let you decide on that one. Now, another one of my absolute favorite hidden characters also appears at the end of Princess and the Frog during Dr. Facilier's demise scene. As the music starts to play, right before the words, are you ready, you will notice three tombstones that all have faces that are stone, but sort of pop off the stone and come to life. If you're able to pause the movie right before these faces jump off the tombstones, you might notice that the face in the middle is the exact face of Madame Leota from The Haunted Mansion. The reference is a little bit more obvious if you happen to see Madame Leota in her form outside of the entrance of The Haunted Mansion on the left when she is on a tombstone. The hair and headpiece surrounding Madame Leota makes this an absolutely obvious reference to the ride. I am so here for all of the Haunted Mansion references. And with that, we have reached the final hidden characters in The Princess and the Frog, which can be found in Tiana and Naveen's Bayou wedding scene. If you are able to pause right at the beginning of the Bayou scene before it zooms in on Tiana and Naveen, you will notice that there is a big crowd of animal characters. Well, if you happen to glance over to the side, you might notice two little deer next to each other. And I can't help but feel like this is a fully grown up Bambi and Feline from the movie Bambi. 
Whew, and now that we're done with Princess and the Frog, we're going to move on to Tangled. Tangled has some really fun hidden characters, so make sure to keep an eye out for these. In the I've Got a Dream sequence, there is a moment where the ruffian who is dressed up as Cupid flies around the Snuggly Duckling. As he is flying around, keep an eye up in the rafters as there is a very recognizable puppet. Yes, sitting and enjoying the view of all of the ruffians singing about their dreams is a little hidden Pinocchio. And then, a little bit later in the movie, when Flynn and Rapunzel are in Corona and exploring the town, there is a brief sequence where they are in a room together surrounded by a bunch of books. Some of them are open, some of them are closed, and some of them are in stacks. But if you keep a really keen eye out, you can actually spot three references to other Disney movies. One of the closed books on the floor is a reference to Beauty and the Beast. The book that is open right in front of the windowsill actually shows a page from the Sleeping Beauty book at the very beginning of that movie, and a book that is closed and on top of a stack of other books all the way on the right side of the screen actually references the Broadway poster of The Little Mermaid on Broadway. This is a fun little nod not only to The Little Mermaid as a story, but also to Disney on Broadway. And I can't help but love this reference because I actually saw the out-of-town tryout of The Little Mermaid when it was playing in Denver. Ah, such a fun memory that I get to think about every time that I watch Tangled. And with that, we will move on to the movie that was an absolute phenomenon, which is Frozen. Frozen has some really fun blink and you'll miss it moments, so let's get into all of the hidden characters. During the song For the First Time in Forever, Anna passes by a plate of candy. This candy is is animated to be very similar to the candy in Sugar Rush from the movie Wreck-It Ralph. In the very same song, a few moments later, when Princess Anna exits the gates of the castle, you will notice two very familiar party guests who are coming to the coronation of Queen Elsa. As over on the left side of the screen, you will very clearly recognize Rapunzel and Flynn Rider from Tangled. I think this is such a fun reference and one that is actually a little bit easier to spot. And the final hidden characters in Frozen can be found in Wandering Oakens. When Princess Anna first comes into the shop, you will recognize a little tiny hidden Mickey Mouse in the shelving. And then also right on top of Oaken's desk is a little hidden Mike Wazowski figure. And this one's a little bit harder to see because he seems to be carved in some sort of wood or copper. For the next film, we are moving on to Big Hero 6. This one has a really fun reference to the villain of the movie we just talked about, Frozen. There is a very funny and specific scene when Baymax is shooting off his arm into a statue and a brick wall which tumbles down. Well, if you pause the movie right before the statue is destroyed, you will actually notice that it's a statue of Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, the villain from Frozen. Hans also appears as a little wanted poster in the police station, which I think is so fun. Next, we are moving on to the movie Zootopia, which has a fun hidden reference to a lot of Disney movies. And this time I mean literal Disney movies, and even one cancelled Disney movie. In the scene where the Duke of Weaseltown is trying to sell off some knockoff copies of Disney movies, we can see such movie titles as Pig Hero 6, referencing Big Hero 6, Wrangled, which of course references Tangled, Wreck-It Rhino, which references Wreck-It Ralph, Meowana, which references Moana, Floatsin 2, which references Frozen and technically Frozen 2. But the one that's really interesting is in the bottom row in the middle, which is called Giraffic. Many people won't recognize this one, but this is actually a reference to a canceled Disney movie, which was originally going to be called Gigantic, which was going to be a Disney retelling of the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Unfortunately, we never got this movie, so for now, we'll just have to live on in this hidden Disney reference. Hi, Editing Nikki jumping in one more time. Really sorry, I promise it's the last one, but I just wanted to mention this really cute nod to Frozen, as if you look in the back of this scene, you will see two cute little elephants walking around, and they happen to be dressed as Queen Elsa and Prince Princess Anna from Frozen 1. Okay, sorry to interrupt, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Moving on to the movie Moana, which also has quite a few hidden Disney characters. At the very beginning of Moana, we see a scene where Grandma Tala is talking to the children of Montanui. Moana's father comes in and tells them they have nothing to be afraid of and that there are no monsters, to which a bunch of tapestries drop down and showcase a lot of different monsters, which scare the children. The very first tapestry to drop down is actually a picture of Marshmallow, the big snow monster from Frozen. Frozen. During the song You're Welcome, which is Maui's big song, there is a blink and you miss it moment where a bunch of fish swim up and jump out of the water. If you look really, really closely, you might be able to spot Flounder in the School of Fish. Next, when Moana and Maui encounter the Kakamora, when Moana first lands on the Kakamora's ship, she faces a whole bunch of Kakamora who turn and face her. 
all the way on the right hand side of the screen, there is a fun little reference to Big Hero 6 as one of the Kakamura has face paint that looks just like Baymax. And finally, when Maui and Moana are in the cave of Tamatoa, Maui gets his fish hook back, which allows him to transform into a lot of different animals. However, he has a little bit of trouble with this at first, and his magic sort of spins out of control and transforms him into a lot of animals. And one of these is actually Sven from Frozen. And do you remember the little turtle that Moana helps from the shore into the sea? Well, if you just so happen to stop into Turtle Talk with Crush and ask him if he knows Moana, he might tell you that she actually rescued him and brought him into the sea. So I am definitely counting this character on my hidden Disney characters references. I think it is safe to say that this adorable little turtle that Moana helps is actually Crush from Finding Nemo. Next, in Ralph Breaks the Internet, there is a really big reference to the site Oh My Disney. Of course, this is the scene where all of the Disney princesses can be seen, but there are also references to Peter Pan, Grumpy, Buzz Lightyear, Dumbo, and some of the stormtroopers from Star Wars. Next, we are moving on to Frozen 2, which again has quite a few references to Disney characters. At the very beginning of the movie, Anna and Elsa are playing in an enchanted forest which is made from Elsa's snow. Some of the little figurines that they're playing with reference other Disney characters. If you look really closely, you'll be able to see Baymax, Dumbo, Snow White, and Bolt. A little bit later on in the charade scene, when Olaf is transforming in between all of the words he needs to get Kristoff to guess, one of his words is mouse, and he very slyly turns into a little reference to Mickey Mouse. And then finally, at the very end, when Queen Elsa is going through all of the ice memories that are playing out before her, one of them is of her young mother and father first interacting with each other. They talk about a book that is written by a very new Danish author. And if you look at the title of the book that young King Agnar is holding, you will notice that the book is actually a picture of Ariel. It's the picture of her that's from the side with the moon behind her. But the young author that they're referencing is actually Hans Christian Andersen, who wrote the original story of The Little Mermaid. And the final Disney movie that we're going to be talking about today is Raya and the Last Dragon. In the scene where Tuk Tuk is running through the city, you can see a little hidden dog over on the side. This might actually be a reference to Dante from the Pixar movie Coco. And last but certainly not least on our list of hidden Disney characters is in this scene right here in Raya and the Last Dragon. There seems to be a little chicken with his head being covered up by some sort of pot or coconut. And I can't help but absolutely think that this is Hey Hey making his way all the way into Kumandra. And as I said in my conditions, there are quite a few Disney character references in the movie Wish. However, there are so many references in that movie because it is an homage to the Disney 100 year celebration that there are just too many to include all in this video. So if you guys would like a breakdown of all of the hidden Easter eggs and references in the movie Wish, make sure to leave it down below so that way I can also make that video. But with that, friends, we have talked about every hidden Disney character in Disney movies. Again, to my knowledge. But that being said, I am absolutely positive that I have missed one or two. So if I have missed a hidden character that you are really used to seeing in your favorite Disney movie, make sure to leave it down below so that way I can find the hidden characters that you give to me. That being said, there are also a lot of hidden Disney objects in these movies that I did not do a video on, so if you guys would like to see a full video of hidden Disney objects in the future, make sure to leave that down below as well. I am also going to leave a link right up here to my official Disney rankings playlist. This is a playlist of every Disney ranking that I have made so far, and I am so grateful to all of you for all of the love that I have gotten on those videos. They are so fun to make, and believe me, there are plenty more coming. And that being said, make sure to subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, I am on TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining me in finding all of these fun hidden Disney characters and cameos in other Disney movies. I always have so much fun finding all of these little references and I absolutely wanted to take the time and share them with you. Thank you again so much for watching. I had so much fun. It means the world to me that you guys are loving these videos and I am having so much fun making them. So until next week, stay magical and I'll see y'all real soon.